Horrible Science, Microscopic Monsters, by Nick Arnold, illustrated by Tony DeSalles, read by Vienna Vance. We're itching to meet you. Introduction. Which of these is the smallest? A, your pocket money, miserly amount. B, your teacher's brain, pathetically puny. Or C, a mite, a bug that looks like a scaled down spider, tiny but terrifying. Well, hopefully you said a mite, because at just 0.2 millimeters, a mite is one of the smallest objects anyone can see. Your eyes can't see smaller things because the lenses in your eyeballs can't focus on them, and that means that whatever you look at has a whole lot of detail that's too small to make out. This tiny world can be very incredible and very beautiful. They say small is beautiful, don't they? But it can also be very horrible. Warning. This book has an 18 certificate, certificate and it's unsuitable for persons over 18. This means it's too frightening for adults. If they read it, their eyes could pop out on stalks. Now, as I said, your eyes can't see tiny things, but your mind's eye can imagine them. And when you read this book, your imagination, your imagination will be working so hard there will be steam coming out your ears. You'll be imagining a whole new world, the terribly tiny microscopic world. And as you're about to find out, it's a world of violence and sudden death. Yes, it's a world of microscopic horrors and monsters that make made-up monsters and stories appear lovable and fluffy. And make no mistake, the microscopic monsters in this book are as real as you are. At this very second, they're strolling on your skin and snuggling into your bed and scoffing your sandwiches and splashing about in your toilet. So brace yourself for a feast of fearsomely fascinating facts. Find out how millions of creatures die when you walk on the grass. Crunch, I tree kelp! What slimy animals lurk between your teeth. Crawl, lurk, slither, slide. How germs can make dead bodies explode. Boom! And worst of all, how flushing the toilet can cover you in poo. Now I'm really browned off. Another warning, these facts could turn a frog green. And don't leave this book on Granny's chair. It could make her false teeth fall out. No, you'd best read this book right now before someone else takes it away and starts reading it for themselves. Wow! Grr. Magical microscopes. You might be surprised to learn that this book is more than just a book. It's a microscope. The magic microscope. You're holding a microscope. A wonderful instrument for peering at tiny objects and seeing them like no human eye ever can. A device for making things appear hundreds of times larger than they really are. Yeah, right. What's that? This book doesn't look like a microscope? Oh, but I'm telling you it is. Try putting your eye up close to this circle. Look closely. Concentrate hard. Very hard. See anything? No! Well, look over the page and prepare to be amazed. Thanks to the power of this book, er, I mean microscope, we are now looking at the page enlarged 100 times. So you know that paper is made up of little fibers that were once wood from trees? Well, here's your chance to check out what else you know. A tiny, tiny quiz. This quiz is so easy that you're even told what the answers are. Trouble is, the letters and the answers are, are muddled up, so you've got to work out what they say. Whenever you ride your bike, the tires leave tiny, microscopic traces of melted R-E-B-R-U-B. -E -R no, not rhubarb, it's rubber. When your tires touch the road, a tiny surface layer 0.025 millimeters thick melts. So in fact, your wheel slides over the ground. The tire cools immediately as the wheel turns away from the road, but microscopic traces of rubber remain stuck to the tarmac. When your tire has lost lots of rubber, it looks worn and tired. I mean tired. Two, a fungus makes microscopic seeds called spores. When the sun shines, they go dark, just like you do when you get a S-T-U-N-N-A. Two, are you stunned? It's a suntan. Yes, fungal spores get suntans, and the chemical that makes this dark color is melanin, the same substance that makes the dark color in human skin. Three, when you go outside, your hair, your clothes, and the snot in your nose become coated in thousands of microscopic bits of rock, half the width of a hair. They're known as T-R-I-G. Yes, it's a tricky question. It's grit. Made up of finely ground up rock or sand just 0.03 millimeters in size that's blown on the wind. Some grit comes from deserts or erupting volcanoes on the other side of the world. If it gets in your pudding, you can have a bit of desert in your dessert. Five, four. At the heart of every raindrop is a microscopic speck of dust. Some of this dust fell to earth from R-O-U-T-E-C-A-P-E-S. Four, every day millions of specks of dust about 0.002 millimeters across fall to earth from outer space. Inside a cloud, drops of rain form around the dust, and when a raindrop plops down the back of your neck, you could be making contact with a 4.7 billion year old lump of alien rock. It's even older than your dad's favorite music. That's just ancient rock. Five, look at a spider's web under a microscope and you'll see tiny lumps of G-U-E-L. Five, do they serve G-U-E-L in your school dinners? Actually, it's glue to stick insects to the web. 
Did you know that spider silk is one of the strongest materials in the world? Yet a spider's web that stretched around the world would weigh no more than an orange? Six. All the tiny bits of dirt and dead skin that you've washed off your hair in your life would weigh more than your H-O-W-L-E-O-D-B-Y. Don't howl oddly, it's whole body. In just one year, you could collect three kilograms of grotty, greasy gunk from your hair. You could fill a small bucket and butter your sandwiches with it. Seven. In 1848, scientist John Quicket peered through his microscope at a scrap of leather that had been nailed to a church door. He was shocked to discover it was really U-N-H-A-M-I-N-K-S. Unham inks, that's disgusting. Seven. What do you ink the stuff is? It turned out to be human skin cut up from a dead Viking 900 years before. Well, I'm sure the Viking was really cut up about that. So how did you get on? If you thought it was easy, then maybe you fancy really getting to grips with the microscopic world. Test your teacher. Who invented the microscope? Answer. The correct answer is, I don't know, because no one is sure. But teachers don't like admitting they don't know things, and historians don't mind guessing. It was Dutch spectacle maker Hans Lippershey in 1590. Idiot, you got the wrong spectacle maker. It was Hans Johnson. Huh, you're both wrong. It was his son, Zacharias. The truth is, all three said they invented the microscope. Well, I suppose anyone could have made the discovery. Once you've got a couple of lenses, the glass bits that make objects appear larger, it's easy enough to put them together and realize that two lenses make things appear larger than just one lens. And when your arms start aching from holding the lenses apart at the right distance to see tiny things in focus, sooner or later you'll hit on the idea of sticking the lenses at either end of a tube. And hey presto, you've invented the microscope. But what about the lens? Well, guess what? No one's too sure who invented the lens either. We've brought some experts together to try and solve the mystery. One, archaeologists have found a piece of rock crystal in a cave on the island of Crete. It was carved 4,500 years ago. It's shaped like a lens and it makes things look bigger. Two, in 1850, archaeologists found another lens-shaped crystal in what is now Iraq. It was carved by the Assyrian people in 800 BC. Mine's better quality. It's crystal clear. Yes, but mine's older. Three, boring historians point out that there is no actual proof that these crystals were used as lenses at all. But there is proof in the writings of short-sighted Roman philosopher Seneca, A.D. 4-65, to that he used a bowl of water as a lens to help him read the scrolls at his local library. So does that mean Seneca invented the lens? It's transparently obvious. Sounds fishy to us. Lovely lenses. Anyway, someone invented the lens, and around 1300, someone else in Italy, yes, you guessed it, no one knows who, found out how to grind glass to make lenses. The trick was getting the right shape. Want to know how it's done? Well, why not make your own? Go on, it's easy. Dare you discover how to make your own lens? In the olden days, you had to cut the glass carefully to shape, and then grind it with gritty substances by hand until you had made the, exactly the right curve, and then you had to polish it to get rid of any scratches. Basically, this meant grinding the glass some more with fine powders. This grinding might take days of toil. Grind, 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 grind. Is it fun? No, it's a grind. But you'll be pleased to know there's an easier way. You will need a bottle shaped like this. An empty mouthwash bottle is ideal. This book. What you do. 1. Completely fill the bottle with water so there are no air bubbles. 2. Place the bottle sideways on over this page. Put your eye close to the bottle and look at this fascinating blood-sucking flea. Hurry up, I haven't got all day. You should be able to see that the flea has got bigger. But how? Here's a clue. You have to imagine light bouncing off the page and bouncing into your eyeballs. Which of these explanations is correct? A. The light speeds up as it passes through water and this makes your brain think the flea is bigger than it is. B. The water bends the light towards a point. If I put my eye at this point, I can see the flea close up. C. The water makes the light brighter and this makes my brain think that the flea is bigger. Answer. B. Light bends as it passes through the bottle and the water and the angle the light hits your eye it fools your brain into thinking that the object is much nearer and so much larger than it really is. And that, surprise, surprise, is how a microscope lens works. Only the bending of light is done by the glass. For about 70 years after they were invented, microscopes were terribly powerful and few scientists had cottoned on to the potential of the new invention. But a lone genius was about to change all that. With his own hands, he would make the most powerful microscopes then known and use them to make some monster discoveries. Hall of Fame, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, 1632 to 1723. Nationality, Dutch. Leeuwenhoek means lion's corner, which was the name of the cafe Antony's dad owned in Delft, Holland. Oh, well, things could have been worse. Antony could have been named after something on the menu. He might have had to go through life as Antony, Antony Super Duper Whopper Burger. Antony's dad died when he was still at school. The young boy went to live with a relative and learned how to be a cloth merchant. For much of his life, he was a quietly, hard-working, quietly prosperous shopkeeper in his hometown of Delft. It sounds seriously boring, but at least he had an interesting hobby. I can trips ready for table nine. You guessed it. Microscopes. Wow, this ant looks huge. Incredible. Amazing.